Hi friends, welcome back to Curious With. I am Dr. Mosina. Today we will see a viral disease condition in bovine. So let's uh, go to today's topic, winter dysentery. This is caused by bovine coronavirus. Winter dysentery is an acute highly contagious gastrointestinal disorder and it affects housed adult dairy cattle primarily during winter. So it is a acute highly contagious gastrointestinal disorder mainly affecting housed adult dairy cattle and primarily during winter. The clinical features include profuse diarrhea sometimes accompanied by dysentery that is bloody discharge and a profound drop in milk production, and variable anorexia and depression and mild respiratory signs such as coughing. The disease has a high morbidity but low mortality. And spontaneous recovery within few days is typical for this disease. So there will be spontaneous recovery of the affected animals and this disease have a high morbidity rate but very low mortality rate. Now let us see the etiology of winter dysentery. Although the precise etiology of winter dysentery has not been conclusively confirmed, an increasing body of evidence implicates a bovine coronavirus closely related to the virus that causes diarrhea in neonatal calves. Now let us see some evidences for, for bovine coronavirus as the cause of winter dysentery. So these are some evidences. One is the clinical signs and pathologic findings are consistent with disease induced by bovine coronavirus and zero conversion to bovine coronavirus has been demonstrated in affected cattle. And third is the virus is frequently isolated from diarrheic feces of cattle that exhibit clinical signs of winter dysentery. And fourth one is the disease has been reproduced by briefly exposing bovine coronavirus seronegative lactating cows to a calf experimentally infected with feces from cows with winter dysentery. Notwithstanding, it has not been possible to consistently reproduce winter dysentery through oral inoculation of adult cattle with bovine coronavirus. Concurrent risk factors such as changes in diet, cold temperatures, closed confinement with high animal density, poor ventilation and presence of other microorganisms may be required before bovine coronavirus causes clinical disease in adult cattle. So it requires some concurrent risk factors for bovine coronavirus to cause the disease. Now let us see the transmission, epidemiology and pathogenesis of winter dysentery. Bovine coronavirus is transmitted via the fecal oral route through ingestion of feed or water contaminated with feces from clinical cases or clinically healthy carrier animals. Viral particle present in respiratory secretions of affected animals may further enhance transmission. Transmission of disease is promoted by close confinement. And winter dysentery is highly contagious and easily introduced to barns by visitors, carrier animals and fomites. Winter dysentery is common in northern climates where animals are housed indoors for extended periods during the winter months. It is seen frequently in northern US, Canada, UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Israel and in Japan. Most of these countries have an extensive period of winter and in, uh, in that period animals are housed indoors. So the prevalence of this disease is very high in the winter. 
corona viruses survive best at low temperatures and at low ultraviolet light intensities which can lead to a build up of virus in the environment during the colder months adult lactating cows that have recently calved are the most severely affected group but the disease can also affect younger or older animals and males so the most severely affected group is adult lactating cows that have recently calved morbidity rate is very high with 20 to 50% of animals in a herd exhibiting clinical signs within few days and close to 100% of animals in the herd exhibiting signs within a week but the mortality rates associated with winter dysentery are generally low about 1 to 2% only some degree of immunity to winter dysentery appears to develop because recurrences if seen in the same herd are noted at 1 to 5 year interval so some degree of immunity appears to develop because the recurrences are noted in the same herd at about 1 to 5 year intervals inflammatory mediators that cause hypersecretion in the small intestine and colon are thought to contribute to the voluminous diarrhea seen in cattle with winter dysentery so the inflammatory me- mediators that cause hypersecretion are responsible for the voluminous diarrhea in addition destruction of epithelial cells in the colonic crypts result in transudation of extracellular fluid and blood explaining the hemorrhagic nature of diarrhea in some cases so in some cases there is a hemorrhagic nature for diarrhea and it is explained by the destruction of epithelial cells in the colonic crypts leading to the transudation of extracellular fluid and blood now let's see the clinical findings winter dysentery is characterized clinically by an acute onset of fluid diarrhea and a profound decrease in milk production so the some the diarrhea will be sometimes hemorrhagic and the milk production will decrease to about 25 to 95 percentage production loss feces are liquid and homogeneous with little odor dark green to black and may contain blood typically in the first lactation heifers or mucus also sometimes present a musty sweet unpleasant odor is reported in barns with large numbers of affected cattle and nasolacrimal discharge of cough may accompany or precede the diarrhea other signs apart from the hemorrhagic diarrhea and the presence of mucus other signs include mild colic dehydration depression a brief period of anorexia and some decrease in body condition so these are the other signs apart from the hemorrhagic diarrhea and musty sweet uh, odor occasionally animals exhibit small severe signs such as passage of feces with variable amount of blood that we already discussed then severe dehydration and weakness but the mortality rate that is the fatalities are rare only 1 to 2 percentage is the mortality rate of winter dysentery whereas almost 100 percentage of animals can be affected in one week diarrhea in individual animals has a short course and feces return to normal in 2 to 3 days in most animals decrease disease in the herd typically subsides in 1 to 2 weeks but milk production may take weeks to months to return to normal now let's see the postmortem lesions 
The small intestine may be dilated and flaccid but the lesions are primarily seen in large intestine and the lesions of large intestine consist of cecal and colonic mucosal hyperemia, linear streaks or pinpoint sized hemorrhages mostly along the colonic mucosal ridges and blood in the lumen of large intestine. Histologic findings may include widespread degeneration and necrosis of colonic glandular epithelium. So, there will be necrosis of colonic glandular epithelium and widespread intestinal degeneration in winter dysentery. Here are some picture of pictures of histologic findings. In the first one you can see the villus tip epithelial cells necrosed caused by bovine uh, the uh, corona bovine coronavirus antigen in the villus tip epithelial cells of duodenum and in the surface epithelium and scattered macrophages of colon. Scattered macrophages are represented by long arrows. Coming to the diagnosis, the primary diagnostic techniques are PCR and serology. A diagnosis of winter dysentery can be confirmed by demonstrating coronaviral particles in fecal samples via electron microscopy or by confirming the presence of viral antigen or viral DNA via the antigen ELISA or reverse transcriptase. Zero conversion to coronavirus in acute and convalescent serum samples taken 8 weeks apart also helps to confirm the diagnosis. Differential diagnosis for acute diarrhea in adult cattle include bovine viral diarrhea, enteric salmonellosis and coccidiosis which are the other diseases causing uh, hemorrhagic diarrhea. These diseases can be excluded by the absence of mucosal lesions in bovine viral diarrhea. That is bovine viral diarrhea will cause mucosal lesions apart from di uh, diarrhea. Then negative fecal cultures by salmonella species and negative fecal flotation by coccidiosis. as well as by the characteristic clinical presentation of winter dysentery that is a rapid onset of diarrheal disease of short duration in a herd with high morbidity but low mortality. So, that is the uh, characteristic clinical presentation of winter dysentery rapid onset of diarrheal disease of short duration in a herd with high morbidity and low mortality. Now, let us see the treatment and control of winter, winter uh, dysentery. Symptomatic and supportive care should be given and most cattle affected by winter dysentery recover spontaneously because diarrhea is only for a short period of time. Fresh water, palatable feed and free choice salt should be available at all times. The use of astringents, protectants and adsorbents is controversial. IV fluid therapy or blood transfusions may be required in severely affected cattle. There is no vaccine for winter dysentery, so isolation of newly introduced cattle for 2 weeks and isolation of any adult cow with diarrhea is advised to decrease the likelihood of disease introduction into a herd. In an outbreak, access to the premises should be restricted and all persons in contact with affected cattle should ensure that their footwear and clothing are clean before leaving an affected farm.
so that is all about wind dysentery caused by bovine coronavirus. So, the characteristic uh, feature of this disease is a rapid onset of hemorrhagic diarrhea uh, with uh, high, mob high mobility but low mortality and the diarrhea is only for a short period of time. The mortality rate is very less 1 to 2 percentage, but the morbidity can go up to 100 percentage in a week. So, if the video is informative and useful, please like it, comment your suggestions and if you are new to this channel and not subscribed yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. See you soon with another video. Thank you.